This is my current Ethereum mining rig setup. There are a number of Sapphire Nitro RX 480s and 470s and a few XFX cards. Today I'm going to show you how to mod the BIOS of one of these uh, RX 480s. This one right here. This is the 480 that we're going to modify. And there is a little switch right underneath the LED button. Right down there. Right there. And you want to make sure that switch is on this side. It comes default on that side like that. So you just want to make sure that you switch it over to the side where the display ports and HDMI ports are. So once you've got your BIOS switched, you can unplug any other or take out any other GPUs from your rig. You can leave them in, but I would recommend flashing one card at a time for safety purposes. Now the card doesn't have to be in the board. It can be on a riser. Either way will work fine. I'm going to leave mine in the board just to simplify things and I'll get started. Here we can see that the stock lithium hashing rate is about 24.6, 24.5 mega hash per second. Before you flash your modded BIOS onto your card, make sure that you have the latest AMD drivers installed. You want the Crimson Edition Hotfix 16.9.2 or 16.9.1. If you have an earlier version, your GPU will fail to boot, you won't be able to get into Windows, and you'll have problems. So make sure that you have these drivers installed or a newer version before you flash your modded BIOS. There are two ways to back up your BIOS that I know of. You can use GPU-Z or ATI WinFlash. Either one can be used. Uh, you can use both, just to be careful. So we'll start off by using GPU-Z. We'll open GPU-Z. We'll click on the BIOS options and save. We'll type in a name for the original BIOS, something which you will remember uh, what file is for what card, if you have multiple cards, something that you'll remember is the original ROM, not the modded ROM. Click save after you've done that. Click OK and close GPU-Z. That's backed up. Now we can go ahead and back it up with ATI WinFlash. Again, you can use one of these. You don't have to use both of them. Open ATI WinFlash. Right-click. Run as administrator. Once it's open, click on the Save button. Again, find your destination folder, type in a name that you're going to remember. Once that's done, click Save. And that's done. You can close ATI WinFlash. Now we'll open Polaris BIOS Editor and modify the BIOS. Modifying your BIOS is dangerous and could cause irreversible damage to your GPU. Using a modified BIOS may void your warranty. The author will not be held accountable for your actions, and neither will I. Okay. Open your original BIOS that you backed up. 
click on open select the BIOS that you want to modify now we're just going to do a simple modification here it's really all you need to do is to copy the 1750 timing into the 2000 timing you'll see that they are different they do have different numbers at the end even though they both say 777 at the beginning so copy the 1750 timing delete the 2000 timing and paste in the 1750 into the 2000 once that's done you can save it I did try um, some of the power tune options modifying some of that and I found that doing that it was not really stable I couldn't get a stable lower wattage ROM going so I'm, I'm just using this this is fine with me so again save it click on save pick a name that you're gonna remember as the modded modified ROM and then click save that's saved so we can now close Polaris BIOS editor now we're gonna flash it so we can open ATI Win Flash. right click on it run as administrator again now this time we want to click on load image we want to find that image that we just created the modified one once it's loaded into ATI Win Flash, we can click on program and that will flash the BIOS to your cart you may or you may not see a uh, flashing a loading screen while it's going on it may get stuck behind the window sometimes it does for me sometimes I see it so when you're ready just click on program and be patient while it's flashing your card it will let you know when it's done it will tell you it's successful there okay now you can choose to restart or shut down yourself and here we are back into Windows and you can see the modified ROM is now hashing at 27, 27.8, 27.9. I'm using a viewer here to view my desktop, so it, it sometimes goes 0.1 or 0.2 uh, slower than it would without the viewer. So you'll probably see a 28 mega hash per second on average. I'm seeing almost 28. Here you can see the speed without the VNC viewer on. It's pretty steady at 28 mega hash per second. Now if we want to make this go faster, we can open Radeon Settings, go to Gaming, Global Settings, Global Wattman, and we're just going to up the memory. I like to up it to 2200. And here you can see it's over 30.5 on average. It'll usually get around 30.7 if I'm not using the viewer.
and it is stable. I was running it all day. Here you can see without the viewer, just start it up so it'll kind of stabilize at 30.7, 30 30.6, 30.7. 30 now if I just leave it running it'll generally stay around 30.7. So that's pretty good between 30.5 and 31. I'm pretty happy with that. And no matter what I tried I couldn't really get anything stable over 31. And when I tried a low wattage modification, I found that the core clock was still changing a little bit. It wasn't 100% stable. So I prefer just to leave it like this, have it run stable, solid. It's not a big deal. So I hope this helped you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.